This is a Canon 5D Mark II. It's uh, the large. It has a full frame sensor in it, which I, I, I I'm a photographer and I want uh, my wide angle lenses to be wide angle, and that's how you get how you do that. But this is the first time I've used a, a still camera for shooting video, and the sensor on this is so stunning, and it's like a poor man's red camera. In fact, the final version of House was filmed on this camera. So um, the quality, the HD quality on, on this camera is just great. But what's really nice is it lets me work close up like you are, but with a wider angle lens than you have on your on your on your. Uh, what about camera. what about memory? I hear it's uh, how does that work? It, and, and getting it downloaded. So I have a 32 gig card. Mm -hmm. So. And how long will that be for interview type material? Um, 14 minutes is four gigs, so this is quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of interview material. The problem is you can only record 14 minutes at a time, and then it'll cut off, and you have to restart it uh, because this is a fat file system on here, and it can only store four gigs. How do people consume business video or videos that you do? Is it is it through the blogging platform? Is it through social network? Is it through everything? It, it's everywhere and it's very spiky. I, I mean, I, a couple of weeks ago I had a video watched half a million times and that was most, got most of its traffic because it's on, it was on Gizmodo. They brought about a hundred and something thousand people and then it was on Huffington Post and they brought 200,000 people. I mean, it's crazy the numbers that are now showing up on these uh, various blogging platforms. Um, and some people come to YouTube and, and subscribe to me, uh, which I love you guys. Um, some people um, will see me on Twitter and talking about it. Some people will t see me on Google Buzz talking about it. Some people will t see me on uh, Facebook and, and talk about it. And not just me, right? Because if it gets retweeted, like if you retweet a video of mine, your audience will see it. And all of a sudden I'll be getting some hits from y your audience. And I, so it's it's... It all adds up, you know. It's a new world of distribution. You really have to work, work on making friends and, yeah. and influencing people, yeah, and yeah. not just putting up great content. Yeah. So, Robert, tell us about sort of the business objective of your doing video now and your sponsorship and sort of how you do it and sort of about the the business. Well, it, um, what I do for Rackspace is three things. Only one of which has anything to do with video, although it all feeds together. One, I'm, I help them with PR because I know all the tech journalists in the world. And I have a Twitter list of 500 of them. You can go to my Twitter page and click on tech journalists and see all the news people. But I have personal relationships. I go to press conferences a lot. Uh, I'm around them, and I know how to get them to cover our stories. Uh, that's one thing. Second thing is I'm the ambassador for Rackspace in Silicon Valley. Rackspace is a Texas company. Most of their executives get to Silicon Valley once every couple months, but they can't be on the street. They can't go to all the parties. They can't go to all the events. You know, there's new events every night in San Francisco. I mean, it's crazy. Um, so I'm their proxy. I'm their, the person who shows up and hands out business cards and, you know, uh, keeps people happy. If you want to have a great company, you have to have an institutional way of learning what's going on in your marketplace. And like Zappos does this by having a tour, which is a weird way. A lot of people think, oh, this tour is a marketing vehicle. No, actually, it it sucks in all all these executives from around the world, from all these great companies who want to go and visit it and have an offsite and talk about their company. But then at the end, the Zappos team sits down with them and steals ideas from them and interviews them, basically. In fact, a lot of the ideas on the Zappos tour were stolen from other companies, right? So I'm going around the world studying the bleeding edge of the internet. You know, what's chat roulette? Oh, let's take a video of that. What's, uh, you know, what's Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook doing? Uh, let's take a video of that. What's uh, Twitter doing? Or what's uh, some new startup you never heard of? Or what's Ron, Ron Conway's in the hallway behind you? What's he doing? What, you know, what, what's he investing in? And I capture that with my video camera and both bring that back inside Rackspace as well as put it out for the public to see. So, Robert, I have to ask you, it's, it's been uh, four years since I, uh, I had that big scoop yep. about you leaving Microsoft. And uh, it seems amazing, the four years. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, video blogging or video reporting, you know, what's changed both in terms of, um, you know, the way that you create content, prioritize what you do and how you get it seen? 
Well, a couple things. One, we have HD now. I mean, compared to those days when we had little postage stamp size video, now you can put a 1080p video up on YouTube and it looks really beautiful. And it coming soon is this new Google TV thing, and we're going to be able to get on everybody's 60-inch TV with a YouTube video. So that's that's one thing that I, I'm watching. The other thing is uh, the social networks. I mean, back then there there wasn't Twitter was wasn't really there, right? And Facebook was still something that most normal people didn't know about. And um, Google Buzz, that just got invest, invented a couple months ago. And so, and LinkedIn was still not that popular, and now it's gotten much more popular. So the distribution systems, the social distribution systems for video uh, are evolving very quickly in front of us. And that, that's a huge difference from back then. Back then, you could just put up a blog and everybody would read it or not, or watch a video that was embedded in it. Now you have to really work to get your video embedded in or retweeted in a Twitter and embedded in Google Buzz and embedded in Facebook and get people to talk about it. Companies who are using video blogging and you know you were there at the very beginning at Microsoft, has that worked out do you think? I mean obviously you're doing this big work for Rackspace but but for others, for businesses, I mean... It, it's tough. Uh, you know not very many companies use video effectively. Um, some of them, like like uh, Chevrolet is using it with the new Volt. I, I liked what they were doing. Um, Panasonic I've seen do some interesting stuff. But it's hard to do this kind of work day in and day out. Um, video, video is expensive. First of all, it's expensive. It's, you know, to even buy a nice camera, it's three, four thousand dollars for a top end camera. If you're doing a flip camera, then it looks crappy, you know especially if you start playing on those larger sizes and you get your video on a, on a Google TV, it, it just won't scale to that. Um, it also takes some expertise, you know? I, I mean, knowing how to edit a, a video and get it up on YouTube and, and how to cut it a little bit. It, I mean, that's skills I'm still learning for five years, six years later after I started doing this, right? I, I'm still learning how to do an overlay on, on video or do a lower third and do lighting. I just bought lighting for the first time. I'm starting to play with a studio. But even, that's actually pretty the pretty simple stuff. The really tough stuff is the PR stuff. Is, is uh, When you're carrying a camera like this, it's like shining a light. And when you shine a light on things, uh, or you're, when you decide what to shine it on, it freaks people out. You know, it, most people don't know how to deal with this, don't know how to, you know, handle themselves on video. It's, it's even executives, right? They, they, they still don't look good on TV sometimes. They don't look comfortable. Uh, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, you know, I mean, how many times have we seen him on stage? And he's a little nervous and he's um, not in his element. He's not Steve Jobs yet, right? Mm -hmm. He's not a great presenter that can rally an audience and get people excited. Um, and so, it, you know, it, it's tough. It, it's easier with text, with a blog, because you can pass the blog around and change a word here or there or change a sentence or, now oh, can you get rid of that? You know, and the PR people can look it over and the lawyers can look it over and clean it up. With video, there's not too much you can do to change this, you know? Once you film it, you can cut out a piece, but then all of a sudden I moved over here and it doesn't look natural. And it, 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 if you're not good at storytelling with video, it's, uh, it can really do some brand damage to you, right? On the other hand, if you are good at it, well, you, you are. Out. <laughs> well, you're the best, Robert, and uh, congratulations. Well, oh, you're, you're our hero at BTV, and uh, really all the work you've done as a pioneer in the field. I just, try, I just try to get people into situations that they couldn't otherwise get into. I mean, I, you know, from an uh, aircraft carrier to the White House to... Mark Zuckerberg's uh, press conferences. I mean, I, how many people can fit in a room? It, it, you know, maybe 50, 100. Well, sometimes I have half a million people watching. And if half a million people can't fit in this space, you know. So the only way I can help get people into experiences like that is with a video camera. Cool. All right, man. Great to see you. Thank you.